Minutemen, yep. Citizen Nation exchange their civilian suits for battle gear of a soldier for two weeks each summer. The combat training they receive is one of America's stronger against aggression. In Southern California, the 40th Armored Division trains throughout the year in armies in 42 communities. They take to the field each August to translate their tank and big gun classroom training into proven battlefield techniques. Since man first banded together to protect himself against marauding beasts of prehistoric times, the fighting man has been indoctrinated with a soldier's first command. Take care of the weapon from whence your strength is drawn. Learn to use it properly. Spare no effort to ensure that it functions perfectly when needed. In the 40th Armored Division, that weapon is the tank. Tanker's training revolves around the squat steel monsters, which give the division its massive striking power. Whether their assignment be that of a cook, supply specialist, or tank driver, every one of the thousands of men and officers of the 40th have but one goal, to keep these powerful weapons rolling, to achieve the perfect teamwork so vital to success in battle. Mobility, firepower, shock action, those are the tank's triple role as exemplified by the Minutemen in Armor of the California National Guard's 40th Armored Division. Ah, but first things come first, and when the guardsmen arrive at the military reservation for the annual field training, setting up camp receives top priority the first day. One of the most vital functions in a fast-moving armored force is communications. Miles of telephone wire must be strung and effective radio nets put into action in order that tank commanders may maintain a constant contact with all elements of their battle team. Important, too, is the traditional army sack time. This soldier gets time to relax and read a letter from home, but mess call sounds. Easy there, man, there's plenty for everyone, but there's always a chow hound. And this one's first in line. Yes, there's time for rest and relaxation, but these young Southern California recruits have a lot to learn about the difficult science of modern warfare. And the combat-hardened officers who lead them know that there's no time to waste. <laughs> These officers also know that there's only one place to start, at the beginning. The basic tool of every soldier, no matter what his job, is the army rifle. And until its use becomes as natural to him as sleeping or breathing, there'll be no let up. But the day finally comes when the preliminary instruction is over. It's time to test these newly acquired skills on the firing line with live ammunition. Safety precautions are double checked, last minute range instructions given, and the command commence firing starts a new phase of guard training. A clean miss signified by a waving red flag, dubbed Maggie's Drawers. This flag necessitates a change in shooting stance. Breathe and squeeze, soldier. From individual training to the tanker's triple roll mobility, firepower, shock, 
the rolling hills of California, which once knew the quiet step of peace-loving Spanish padres, now reverberates to the thunder of heavy tank guns as the 40th puts its gunners through firing tests. Throughout the tanker's training, the one word he hears most often is teamwork. Gunner, driver, ammunition passers, and tank commander must merge their separate duties into a smoothly operating team. The professional soldier spends months, yes, even years, in acquiring the highly technical knowledge of modern armored combat. For the guardsman, these years of training must be condensed into his weekly training periods at hometown armories and the all too brief summer sessions of field training. eyes of the 40th are the planes and crews of its light aviation unit, an integral and very important part of every fighting division. The division's big guns can hurl their high explosive shells deep into enemy territory, but only through the eyes of the pilots. Can the results be noted? and proper corrections and firing data be made. Coordinated with ground control center and with ground observers, the small planes ensure pinpoint accuracy for the tank guns and their highly mobile supporting weapons in the artillery. Yes, it's a complicated job, delivering a specified type of explosive or chemical onto an invisible target many miles away. Numerous men, experts in their jobs, are required in such diverse roles as map plotting, communications, and the mathematical calculations of firing data before the gun crew can actually send the shell toward its destination. And so a busy day of training ends. As men of the division, already suntanned and hardened by their days in the field, head back to camp for a cooling shower, a double serving of excellent army chow, then time for relaxation. Movies, hard fought boxing match or softball game, or just plain rest. As a part of the California National Guard, the 40th constitutes a vital element of the nation's defense organization. General Eaton, division commander, accompanies Major General William Dean, most famous prisoner of war in the recent Korean conflict. While the general inspects training efficiency, food, and quarters to ensure that they meet the Army's high standards. Well pleased with this inspection, the general departs for other 6th Army activities. Success on the battlefield hinges on teamwork. And while the tank is an armored division's strong right arm, it still must depend on the courage, the tenacity of its infantry fighters for final victory. Today, modern new weapons can blast whole cities into oblivion, and the important role played by the foot soldier is often forgotten. But it's the man on the ground who has always clinched the final victory. Fortieth infantrymen rehearse their lessons in the fields and mock villages of a California army camp. After their trial runs are letter perfect, they'll go on to advanced training, working in close support of their tanker comrades. An important skill which each 40th soldier must master is the ancient art of hand-to-hand -hand combat. A man's life and that of his buddies may someday depend on, on his ability to disarm 
or subdue an enemy with nothing more than his bare hands. After an experienced instructor has presented a dramatic demonstration of unarmed attack and defense, he calls on his enthusiastic students to pit their own agility against that of their teacher. And finally, the guardsmen are permitted to practice their newly acquired skills on each other before going on to another subject in the jam-packed two-week schedule. Every Army division must depend on its assigned aircraft for a great number of vital chores in addition to artillery observation. These small but capable planes are designed to land and take off on tiny, hastily built airstrips in normally inaccessible areas. The light planes and their pilots may be called on short notice to deliver urgently needed equipment to remote areas of the command, to serve as messengers, or to string telephone lines across impassable terrain. Plane maintenance crews also come in for their share of the work as they labor to keep the sturdy L-19s operating at peak efficiency. An armored division must move swiftly and strike hard. So there's no place for fancy hangars or elaborate repair facilities. The mechanics perform their functions in the open with the wing of a plane shielding them from the hot California sun. Off on another mission, two planes take to the air. Once airborne, the rolling hills of the Central California Military Reservation falls away beneath them. Once a part of the ranch domain of William Randolph Hearst, Hunter Liggett Military Reservation is regarded as one of the finest natural training areas in this country. Another mission completed, the pilot returns to the main airstrip, one of several scattered throughout the division training area. After a quick engine check and gassing up, he'll be ready to take off on his next assignment. Always a highlight of the 40th summer encampment is the weapons demonstration when troops of the entire division witness a dramatic display of armor's massive firepower. Seated on a hillside, the men watch as combat experienced veterans fire each weapon, from the 45 caliber automatic pistol to the huge 155 millimeter self-propelled howitzers. Each guardsman has learned to use his individual weapon. Now he is shown how his weapon blends into the carefully planned firepower of the entire division. The awesome potential always impresses the new guardsman with the importance of thorough training. Targets on the opposite side of the valley are pulverized under tons of high explosives hurled from the 40th's big guns. Troops are reminded again and again of the armored division's triple-pronged role in modern warfare, mobility, firepower, shock action. As the demonstration continues, officers with the experience of two wars behind them tell the recruits how to achieve maximum results with the unprecedented firepower available in the 40th. All 
although the tanker's primary role is to destroy the enemy in front of him, he must also guard against attack from another direction, the sky. In today's army, anti-aircraft weapons and crews have assumed a new importance. These anti-aircraft gunners receive final instructions and then prepare their rapid fire weapons for action. The Quad 50s, as they're commonly called, are ready to throw a hail of lead. The plane's flight is directed by a qualified pilot working with a remote control unit. With the engine functioning properly, the RCAT, held to its course by a cable, buzzes around the circular track and then, in a moment, it is airborne. The carriage drops. Now the gunners are ready to test their skill against the fast-moving little robot, as elusive a target as any full-size plane, but much less expensive. The ground pilot skillfully maneuvers the RCAT through all the evasive actions of an actual fighter plane, with this tiny device. Tracers arch skyward as gunners put to use the lessons they've learned in armory classrooms. Top instruction and lessons well learned really pays off. One of the Quad 50s quickly scores a hit. And then out of action, the target plane floats to Earth by parachute while the happy gun crew celebrates. Always a highlight of the 40th summer encampment is Governor's Day, when the Commander-in-Chief of all of California's military forces arrives to inspect the division as it marches in review. Three times the 40th has fought for its country, and Governor Goodwin J. Knight and General Eaton briefly recall honors earned in Korea, where it held a portion of the battle line against the communists. The colorful ceremony begins with the Army's traditional trooping the line. The governor and high-ranking officers drive slowly along the formation of troops and heavy armored equipment and each of the division's 111 companies and batteries dip their guidons in salute to their commanders. Men from almost every community in Southern California are in the ranks, many of them veterans of both World War II and the Korean conflict. Massed 40th colors wave proudly, all of them bedecked with battle streamers won in the service of this country. The ceremony takes on a festive air, too, as families and friends of the National Guardsmen fill the bleachers to watch and listen proudly, while Governor Knight and General Eaton congratulate the citizen soldiers for their accomplishments. Also on hand to watch appraisingly are ranking representatives of the regular army, under whose tutelage the guardsmen conduct their intensive training. As a spectacular climax to the day's events, the division marches company by company past the official reviewing stand and Governor Knight and his staff accept the salutes. Sun-tanned, hardened by two weeks in the field, the troops proudly demonstrate the efficiency of their rigid training. Thank you. 
after the marching troops have moved past the stands, the 40th displays its armored might. is the 40th Armored Division, the largest, the most potent military force in Southern California. Civilians in peace, soldiers in war, their contributions to the national security have been and always will be a glorious tradition. They are...